hi everybody you know while he's doing the setup let me just you know set the stage uh, so after those intense hours of you know technical sessions i think uh, what i'm going to present is is something on the business side um, i i am currently with dell global analytics but i have been an analytics professional for at least about you know 5 6 years now so most of what i'm going to cover is uh, you know I, is what i did my experiences as an independent consultant uh, in the field of GIS, spanning about three, four years. Uh, so uh, let, let me first define, you know, my definition of what analytics is. I define analytics as, you know, uh, using authentic data either through primary or secondary market research and layering that data on top of technology platforms and most importantly, analyzing them in structured frameworks. So fundamentally, you know, while most of the audience here would start bottoms up from, from a you know, technology perspective, I start the other way around. I start with frameworks and then look at how do I solve the business problems of my clients. So, uh, so this was about you know four years or five years before the 2007-8 time frame when, when the U.S. mortgage industry was going through a tough time. That's when I thought you know uh, we can probably look at uh, you know frameworks in the, in the real estate space. And technology incidentally happened to be a byproduct there. I was trying to see what is the right tool to use, and that's how my foray into uh, GIS started. So I, I started the learning GIS uh, right from scratch during that time. Uh, how long did it take you to learn from scratch and how long did it take you to be able to do analysis? It, it took me about, you know, fairly about six months of time. See, actually what I did was I went and partnered with a spatial organization and I sat with the technology software engineer there and I used to come up with business problems, he used to help me. You know, these are the ways, can we, can we kind of device. So as you will see in some of the examples that I show, uh, you will relate to, you know, how one can think of business ideas being executed on the GIS platform. Unfortunately, you know, for me this, this screen doesn't seem to be up. Yeah, we have tried all, all technologies here. I think we have tried my laptop, we have tried this laptop, we have tried the thumb drive. And I think with an audience full of geeks, I think this is a right business challenge for everybody. How to you know, reduce lead time for speakers. <laughs> Is there some problem with that? Yeah. Have you tried turning it off and on? Easiest. It's the age-old manufacturing. I remember, you know, in my, in my first career as a consultant, I was talking to a. Uh, you know, CEO of a tire manufacturing organization. And when consultants came, this is what he said. Machine chalu nahi ho hai to, there is only one solution, band kar do and restart it. That is the manufacturing era. So anyway, thankfully it has, uh, you know, come back. Uh, I hope I need to just press the left and right. Okay, fantastic. So uh, let me straight away, without much ado, jump into what I tried doing. So this was in 2007 time frame. Somebody uh, from Dubai wanted to you know, invest some, you know, some millions of dollars into the real estate space in India. And they were looking for somebody to come up with a framework to help them identify where and all those investments have to go into. So I went about looking at you know, who are the market participants in the real estate. Now, you know that there is a capital source that is coming from Dubai or US or elsewhere. And I knew there was this developer community, there was the space user community, be it commercial or residential. And there was this you know, service providers uh, who were the middlemen, like some of my friends who spoke earlier, like Common Floor, etc., who was providing multiple services to this space. Uh, so once I identified the market participants, I also looked at, studied, especially the city of Bangalore, what were some of the drivers during that time frame which were increasing the uh, real estate. So the first thing was that you know, urbanization was happening at an increasing pace. People from you know, Andhra and Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, sorry, and you know, Kerala and surrounding areas were all kind of coming into Bangalore. So urbanization was fantastic at that time. And that's when I think that the ring road actually started, outer ring road and all started developing. Then of course the demographics because of the IT, ITES uh, boom also had increased. So the income levels, the crowd was becoming much younger, 25 to 30. Kind of. So those were the structural drivers for real estate. 
Uh, in terms of cyclical drivers, you know, I, I distinctly remember one of my friends coming and telling me that he got a loan, home loan from ICICI at 7.25% fixed rate. That was like, you know, in, in 2007. And then I was like, wow, you know, so, though, so though some of the cyclical drivers are the interest rates and how the market is responding. And interestingly, you know, during the 2007, 8, 9 time frame, even though uh, the real estate elsewhere in the West slumped, in Bangalore especially, the rates continue to remain flat uh, and inflation. Then there are certain property specific drivers, uh, like, you know, when I say that, some of the factors, study us, where is it located, which is the nearest railway station, airport, supermarket kind of examples, the location characteristics. Then the physical characteristics in terms of, you know, amenities, in the apartments, etc. What what are some of things? And uh, also in the framework is the tenant's credit worthiness, which is, you know, if I'm leasing a property, what is going to be my credit history? Will I be able to afford that? So this was more like an investment framework. Basically, again, the other drivers in the real estate were whether the property was legal, there were any claims on the property, then uh, the, the liquidity position of the tenant that I'm going to work with and who was managing the property. So these were fundamentally the drivers and then you know I'm going to bore you with one more framework which is how do I spend the money that I get or whoever is planning to invest, what is the framework that that person uses. Right? So I said look you know some of the decisions should be where should I commit the capital, should it be Mumbai or Bangalore or Delhi or Chennai or wherever and asset allocation strategy in terms of, you know, how much do I put where and also look at return objectives. For this person, you know, he was actually looking at immediate short term return during the time frame. So is the return objective a short term one? Are you wanting to invest and then pull out or, or, or do you have a long term objective in terms of, you know, parking your money on that property for a long time? Then some of the economic factors, uh, which, which at that time were pretty pathetic actually. Then we were also, having done this, identified what were the investment program parameters in terms of allocating capital and returns. We came up with the solution, which was the investment policy. So how much of money are you actually going and creating an equity or, or, or are you going to the debt route, which is like you will lend money and then expect a return on that. So we came up with a certain set of investment policies, which I leveraged it in other sectors related to uh, real estate. So one of the interesting things that I did was I said, look, now there is this technology that is available, you know, I, there is a special platform that is available. And what do I do with that? So I went the regular path of, you know, going to all these property guys like Puravankara and, you know, Prestige and all those. All of them said, hey, you know what, what you have, you know, I, I can also mark the points that you have on a map. I have all the properties, I can put attributes. So what more can you do? So I spent about three, four months running around that process and realize that there should be some other segment or sector in the, in the market which will be a recipient of these services. That's when I went to a bank and then uh, I, I was speaking to the stressed assets department uh, and, and the chief of the stressed assets in the central part of Bangalore, he, he said, look, you know, I have these land or properties which are stressed assets because these people who have taken loan from us haven't been able to return and the bank has taken possession of those properties and we are planning to resell. Uh, unfortunate part is that all of us are centrally located. So how do I reach out to those properties and bang, you know, I knew I had that idea there. So what I did was I, I asked him a sample uh, property and, and then said, he said, you know, somewhere in this Gubalala village, this is actually on the Kanakapura road, it's near Uttaradali, place called Gubalala. So he said, near Gubalala I have a property and that's a stress desert. Uh, the current valuation that I do is a very mechanical way of sending civil engineers there and they do some measurements on the ground. And that's how, you know, we measure the areas, perimeters, etc. Uh, so I said, you know, actually I drove down to that place on Kanthapura Road and when I went there, I was aghast. Because the whole property was kind of encroached. You know, there were compound walls and there were those, you know, dwellers there with huts, etc. When they saw they were not even you know, letting us get in there. We, you know, my friend and I went with a GPS device. We wanted to make, take some measurements. Uh, so, so I realized that you know there is this additional problem of political pressure there because you know some people had occupied the property. And how do I circumvent that? I can't enter into the property. That was the challenge. 
So that's when, you know, really the spatial technology came to my uh, rescue. Because all we did was, you know, we got the perimeter of, of the, the compounded wall. Uh, we, we just took the readings around. And uh, the next step was, you know, I went to the, the other thing was about how do you find out the survey number. So I actually went and stood in a queue uh, in JP Nagar, uh, in, in, in the sub-register office, paid some 50 rupees or something, got some Google or revenue survey map. Okay, once I got this map, the next step was how do I overlay this map on top of, uh, you know, maps. So I got the revenue survey map of Google Ava. I went to my software engineer friend and said, look, you know, I, I, I have this paper-based map, how do you layer that? Went around, said, first he said it's not possible, after about a week or so, he came up with this overlaying technique. He said, you know, I can use polygons, and then he carefully mapped out those polygons on top of Google Earth. And boom, I have my property identified there. I have my survey numbers also, 48 and 59 identified there. So ultimately, I, I could get to the location. Now, the next step was how do I do the valuation of that location? That was the next challenge. So for that, what I did was, I went, again went and went to this BD office. The BD office is near Palace Butahali. So at that point in time, uh, you know, BDA had come up with this comprehensive work development plan of 2015. So I said, let me take that. I got that uh, Stamps and Registrations Act guideline value book. So I actually went, layered the CDP as it is called on top of uh, the property. So uh, that gave me a, a rough idea of, you know, the, the particular thing is near some Dodakala Sundra and Hosahalli. So the Gubalala, the property was around 900 per SFT uh, in terms of guideline value. But then uh, that did not solve the problem because I had to get to the market value. So again, I went around identifying all the you know, property guys around that area, did an indicative survey with them, which was you know, calling them up and figuring out, hey, look, I want to buy a property. And that's when I realized that Google Allah was somewhere around 1400 to 1600 per square foot. So I went back with these figures, which were, you know, pr pretty much, you know, the, the customers were satisfied with the kind of valuation that we came up with. Uh, so one of the one of the extensions that I did with it was, hey, look, you know, now that I've done it for you, I can create a digital library of all your stress assets across the city, right? So that's the potential that is there uh, in this. The other thing could be, you know, how do I, again, mind you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who can just, you know, uh, meet a particular demand by aggregating sources, resources, etc. Let me put it as simple as that. So this was another urban infrastructure firm that I worked with as a consultant. So this uh, firm wanted to buy some property near the international airport, which was near Devanahalli, uh, coming up at that time. So again, you know, they had this problem, how much do I pay for that? <coughs> I, I, I actually drove down across, this is from Yalahanta Junction all the way till uh, the airport and did a lot of GPS markings, the airport complex and uh, interestingly, I also identified all the railway tracks, the ra road network there and, the, and also those quarries, the, the white things that you see, there are a lot of quarries around that area. Uh, same thing. So layered the CDP on top of it to identify whether the property that they were buying uh, was was in a zone which was, you know, commercial in nature. So that was another interesting thing. Uh, then layered the values, same thing, layered the guideline values. Now if you look at it, when I did the color coding thing, I realized that, you know, as expected, somewhere around the Yalahanka area, which is, you know, your uh, Dorda Jala and Meena Kunte and Tamagraha. That's the area which is closer to the city is where you see all the red, which is 450 to 600. Similarly, if you go towards Devanahalli, closer to the Devanahalli towns, in you know, Akupet and um, Rosakote or something, is where, again, you know, you see all those reds. So, it, it kind of corroborated with the, the, the reality on the ground. Uh, so, this was another interesting exercise that happened. Uh, the idea of this is that you know while I continue to look at the, the, look at you know how we can leverage GIS, I would also throw the you know discussion open to the floor uh, in terms of a how can we kind of develop other ideas around this and b also you know I must have used some technology which is you know fairly outdated how can we 
fine tune these these exercises, layering exercises from a technology perspective. So I'll leave the floor open for discussions. Is this ten years ago? Not ten, five. Do you have uh, these kind of maps for other cities as well, or is this just uh, just Bangalore? A Bangalore, Chennai, and Mumbai. Okay, and are you working on developing other other cities as well? Like I said, I'm an analytics consultant, so I partnered with an org. Uh, like one of my friends was saying, they had also done a survey. They are based out of Malaysia. They had done a survey of Chennai, Bangalore, and Mumbai, and they had all the map data available with them. So all I had to do was to go and then layer my attributes on top of that. I see. So, so I come more from, you know, so say for example, you know, I did another assignment for a banking and financial services firm. Now, these people uh, had, uh, they had actually lent loans and they were not able to, you know, go after some of those delinquent loans. And when I layered them on top of the map, I could, re I could realize some good spatial patterns there. For example, I realized that there was a place called Mohammedan Colony near Maleshwaram. That had those huge gaps. They were not able to attract people from there. Whereas Bang on the other side near Sambi Gay Road, I could see clusters. Which means that you know the loans or the loan seekers were coming from certain geographic patterns. The other interesting pattern I found was all along on Osu Road and on the old airport Rasu <coughs> Road is where I had a lot of dots for the salesmen who had gone to give loans. That means the salesman has not penetrated, he had not penetrated on the Osu Road either the right side, which was the Sarjapur area, or the left side, which was the BTM layout area, in terms of selling or in terms of pitching for the loans. That was a good insight that they got. So, how does one get to know someone's location and location of the maps? Revenue is very easy. You have to fill an application form, pay some. See, right to information act. So only thing is you spend half a day there in the sub register office, sit, fill in the map, pay some twenty rupees or fifty rupees. You can get those. And they only give paper maps. They yes, they do only have any digital form. <laughs> 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 I think we need to do a part of it. Is it some way or some way to build essential services on this as well? So, for example, in a certain area, there is water scarcity. So that could also affect uh, real estate prices and their roads. I mean, all kinds of other infrastructure. See, the something. number of attributes that one can layer is, is you know, a, a, anything that you can think of. <coughs> yeah, but how do you get the data? The real thing is, you know, in this case, I was able to get authentic data because I had relevant sources, but in terms of water, for instance, you know, how do you know whether water in Whitefield is good or water in Sajapur Road is, you know, <coughs> again you have to tie up with the BWSS people. Right? We actually do know how to do that. <laughs> okay. uh, because our, that's what our, our company does. We try to figure out where, I mean, because we know water supply schedules mm -hmm. and we know how many days after which you will receive water mm -hmm. and okay. what kind of water scarcity patterns there are. So actually that can be done. Uh, not for Bangalore, but for other cities. Mm -hmm. Why not for Bangalore? Because we, not, we, we, we haven't been able to get to Bangalore yet. Oh, okay. 